Jamal Nyaz here at Wrestling Media Con in Manchester with the gigantic Nick Aldis. Nick, how are you doing today? I'm good. I've never been referred to as gigantic before. Compared to me, you're an, you're an absolute monster. Everything, everything's in context. <laughs> exactly. How are you finding it here at the event, integrating with the fans? Is this something, as a wrestling fan growing up, that you would have loved to have been to? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, that, that's something I think of sometimes when... So I've done a lot of comic cons and obviously the, the, the sort of meet and greet element of wrestling obviously in, increased a lot uh, in, in our generation compared to before. You know, the accessibility really, really increased a lot. And sometimes, you know, when you're tired and you've been traveling a lot or like for me, you know, coming off of all in and then flying straight here and stuff like that. You know, you have sometimes it might seem a little daunting to, to have to do. And then I, that's what I do sometimes is perspective. I step back and remind myself, like, if you were, you know, if you were a kid at this, you know, what, how would you want the experience to be? And that's what I try to try to bring, you know, as a, as a talent. It's, it's flattering to me that anyone anybody would would want to come and meet me and talk to me so you know it, this one is nice the atmosphere is very relaxed it's not yeah. you know it's it's um it's a very chill vibe and everyone seems to be very positive so yeah i mean yeah it, compared to all in i think anything must be ch a chilled out vibe <laughs> yeah, can you describe to that to me what that was like because Obviously, you've got to go in there and, and do the job and put on a show for the fans, but you've got this immense media obligation as well beforehand where you've got to go through all this process of meeting with the fans. There, there was a lot to go into that before. Yeah, it's, it's part of the job. It's part of the territory. You know, I think um, the, the great thing about All In was that it was a, a whole group of talent who, for the most part, are really hitting their stride at the top of their game. You know, yes, there were a few. There were some younger. There were some younger talents there, like MJF, for Jordan Grace, Chelsea Green, people like that, who are exceptionally talented, but who, who still have so much more to to, to do experience-wise. So for them, it was it was a wonderful experience for them to be able to to be involved with it. But for most of us, one of the reasons why it was such a success is because. For many of us, you know, we're we're in a, we're peaking, and we've all, but we've all got a lot of experience behind us. You know, take Cody and I as an example. He was born into the business, but we both we both started wrestling around the same time. We're both about 13 years in. You know, we've done we've we've done a lot of the media obligations. We've we've understood. We've put the miles in. We've traveled around a lot. We've wrestled every opponent, big, small. You know, good, bad. So we're 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 conditioned and experienced now. We have this rich tapestry behind us. I, I, the the real, the real pressure for them was was on was on Cody and the Young Bucks and those guys, you know, having so many obligations prior to the event as well as when they were there. But they had a great team. Everything in this is a team, and and uh, the the great thing about All In was it 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 just exemplified what happens when you get talented people together and everybody wants the same thing. The the the, the atmosphere backstage was so amazing you know there was so much energy good energy like we talked about that all the way through right from the beginning that the reason all this has happened is all good energy we have good vibrations heading to all of us in different ways and, and it attracts that to you know we got cody's attention i got cody's attention cody said i want to wrestle that guy yeah. you know and i and, and i've seen what they're doing and i said i want to I want to be be in that energy, and we want to we can all achieve something really wonderful. And I think for us, we all look at it as it was this great milestone event, and we knew we were making history, all of us. I, if you look at me and Cody staring down in the ring, there's a moment in time. I told, I said to him, "Are you ready to make history?" You know, like because we're doing it. You know, and it was like we were, and that, you know, and. and it sounds corny, but it's like in that moment, that's what came into my head. That's how I felt, you know, and it's like, that's what I got into this business to do. Exactly. And now we've, now we've got to make more. And there must be countless times where, you know, you are sat there before a show, feeling drained, feeling tired from it all. But I imagine on that night, that showed why you love the business and why you do this. It's all, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's 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 years and years of work for you know for for 20 30 minutes of of, of payoff and um they have to mean something and i uh i had this conversation recently with sam roberts when i did his show and i said one of the most frustrating things that that 
happens sometimes in our business in the in the modern in the modern style in the in the sort of uh, in the current uh, model is you get people on the on the non wrestling side on the creative management administrative whatever you want to call it who say I used to hear this a lot in TNA it was you know you just worry about wrestling you know and we'll worry about no I worry about all of it because when this is all said and done, you're not the ones who are going to have spinal issues and broken down bodies. And these. We know that that's coming for us, but we do it anyway. So it has to mean something, you know, and that's the difference. Is like we, we, we know deep down that we've seen it enough. None of us are, we're not under any illusion that we're, we're, we're going to be doing, doing something that's good for our health. We know we're going to pay the price. What, uh, in, in, in addition to the money, we're also getting the moment, the achievement, the, the ability to be, because that's, we're all addicted to this, you know, we, this is what we all got into this to do. So to have that moment absolutely validates every, every plate of shit I've ever eaten and every, you know, every bad show and every injury and every, you know, long drive and every canceled show or, you know, all those things that it, it, it validates it in that moment because you go, how many people in this world can, you know, will ever be in a moment like that? It's not many, and most of them are my heroes. So it's very, very cool. Yeah. And what was it like after you'd had that match? Did you and Cody share a moment backstage? What was discussed? If you'd like to. We, yeah, it, it. We've got so much more to do. There's so much. Obviously, there was. I want to keep that to myself. Yeah, 100%. You know, that's our that's our thing for now. Um, I'm sure in the you know, as time goes on, you know, when we're finished, we can we can share all that. But we have to quote Ric Flair. You know, we've only just begun. You know, there's so much more. We know this, and that was the. I can share this that 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 was the. That was the theme of our conversation with each other. Was that. You know, we thanked each other, and we we knew that we can achieve so much more. You know, the, the right people. Billy Corgan said he said something which resonated very hard with Cody, and and it's almost become it's one of the things that's become one of the sort of mantras that's following uh, us around, like this sort of core group of guys. And he, Billy said, "Let talented people be talented." You know, which it goes back to the point I was saying before about too many people trying to control everything and put their, you know, have their fingerprints over everything because they're, they're you know, having this sort of possessive nature to, to our industry, which is such a personal thing. It's art, you know, and, and to let talented people be talented. And, and when that happens and we all work together and celebrate each other's talent and bring out more of it, it just... It just snowballs, you know, and I just, I feel like we're, we're just getting started with this thing. Do you think for young people aspiring to be professional wrestlers growing up now, do you think this is the best time to be a wrestling fan? With that, what happened last week at All In, that was probably the perfect example of sort of going against everything what wrestling was probably a decade ago in terms of what you had to be to be a success. You guys have done that, have, having had full creative control and executed it the way you wanted to do it. I think um, it's a difficult thing, you know, to say this is the best time. You know, I think so much of it is subjective. Um, I think it's a great time. And I am just, I'm very happy that I'm in that conversation, you know. Uh, that what's really exciting to me is is how the media is shifting and that the the ability to communicate directly with your fan base has, has those walls have been smashed so now we can we can we can put a piece of content out we we had a, we, we had 11,000 people you know s screaming on their feet in this moment that you just can't manufacture that only comes when it when the everything falls into place we did it with a youtube show yeah. you know it, the the it's the, the the 
the validation of that and the proof that it, it can be done. It can be done. Yeah. You know, like the, when I won the TNA world title, it was an incredible feeling to know that I thought, okay, I was right. I, I felt like I could be the world champion. But what was more, what, what I was not prepared for was then I came back to England for Christmas and I, I had no idea how much it meant to British wrestlers, you know, to Brit and to the British wrestling community in general. And, that, cause, and, and it was because it can be done. Like this, the, the human mind is such a, is such a powerful thing. Uh, and so many of us live with, with these barriers and I try to, I don't have that anymore. Like if you go back and look at where, like uh, things like powerlifting and stuff like that, that, you know, for the longest time they said no one will ever bench press 500 pounds. Then one guy did it, but within a year, five more guys had done it yeah. because they because their that mental barrier had now been broken. With it, it can be done. I mean, you were a guy from this past decade. You were pretty much the first and only guy that showed a British wrestler could win the big one on a big stage. You know, we had Drew McIntyre after you, yeah. but in the major leagues, there hasn't been anyone since yeah. how do you feel about being the poster boy pretty much for british wrestling at the moment i don't i mean i, I i'm sure that's an arguable point i'm just i'm happy that i played a role yeah. and it means a lot when it's acknowledged because i just hope that the that the the generation after us and the, and the guys i hope they understand you know that it because it's very easy to get swept up in this sort of we did this, we're doing, we're doing this, but it's like, you're, you're doing it because of what's been done, you know, what's been done before. And it, there's, a, there's a term called the greater fool, which is you know, somebody has to have the courage to risk being comp completely humiliated uh, in order to, you know, because then if they do succeed, it, it can show that it can be done and then others can, you know, can rise up and, and, and also experience that you know and and i from day one i always believed that i could be that guy i could be in that all in was the first time i really felt it and that's saying something considering i've had headline matches with sting aj styles jeff hardy these they were incredible moments for me but i never but it wasn't until chicago where i really felt like i had for a day I reached my potential and now it's my job to just to keep doing it over and over and it's so important to to stay true to your vision of who you see yourself to be because look when I first got into this business you know the British wrestling scene was a lot of really salty bitter guys who who like I was not treated that well you know there was a lot and, and I was and and I was mocked for sort of wanting to, for having this idea, you know, almost a pipe dream of, of thinking I could make it to America and make it to, you know, to television and things like that. And then suddenly, the next thing you know, I'm meeting Seamus and I'm meeting Stu Bennett and I'm meeting Drew and I'm meeting these guys. And I realized these guys, they believe it too. They think the same thing. And what happened? They all, you know, they off they go, we all go. Yeah. And, and it's, it's the courage you know, it, it starts. It starts in here. You know, it's that courage to go. It, it doesn't. It's. It's not about the people. Always talk about the hard work, like physically, but it's mentally having that ability to withstand so much criticism and so many. You know, so many. I mean, if you, if you, if you, if you uh, took all of the horrible, negative, nasty things that have been said about me over the years and put them all into one thing, you'd think, how is this guy, Still going. Yeah. you know, but I'm not the only one. This is just it. And it's just, that's, there will always be people who, when they see someone rising, they, their, their, their inclination is to pull them down, to, to keep them where they are because it validates their inability to make it. But all it takes is one person to be inspired by that and to then rise up like, I met a kid earlier who, who said, I want to be just like you. That's, that's powerful, powerful stuff. And I think, man, this is it. This is what you wanted. Now it's, now it's my obligation to keep going and see how, just how far can we take this thing. I mean, I'd imagine 
life as a pro wrestler, there aren't a lot of times to reflect, but given the nature of what went down last week, it must have been one of those moments where you're sitting back in the locker room after the show and thinking, that, that just happened. Out of everything that's happened in my career, this is not validating me, but this is making me feel, look, I really, really belong here. I've worked my arse off to get here. I'm part of something great. Yeah, I believed I belonged, and now we was able to prove it. And, and the reflection didn't come until a few days later, but obviously, you know, we live in a social media age where you can see the immediate... That's why I had a, I had an impression going in. I said, I feel like we we've got him. We, we've got this right. This is going to work. I've always believed that right from the beginning of this. That's why it worked. You know, it, it, it's you don't will it into existence, but without the will and the belief, it doesn't happen. It takes the hard work and it takes the talent and it takes the, a, a little luck and a little serendipity. But without the belief. It will never be there fully. You have to commit 100% because, especially in this business, the people, anyone watching this interview or watching me on it, they know I believe it. It's, I'm not pretending, you know. It's like I said in the interview about Cody and I, it feels real because it is real. We are, we are rivals. We respect each other. And, and in a weird way, we, you know, we, we, we are... We're sort of destined to, you know, we were destined, I believe that we were destined to meet like that. We were destined to collide, you know, because he needed, you, you know, you, you need the right person for, you know, for those moments to happen. And, and we knew very early on, we knew he is the right opponent for me and I am the right opponent for him. And we will do it again. Well, Nick, you've got a packed weekend ahead of you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Massive congratulations on everything you've achieved in your career and what went down last week. Thank you so much.